guys! We're live! Oh, the lighting seems pretty okay today. That's cool. I'm glad I finally got the chance to come live because um, these past few days I was super tired because it's super hot here in Belgium. And um, it seems like I can't get anything done. Oh, Luki is stretching her wing, you guys. Hi, Jane! Welcome to this live stream. I thought I would talk to you guys about how to teach your owl to step from its perch onto your glove and um, vice versa. Someone asked me this. Hi, Victor OMG. Nice to see you back. Oh, look, she's doing this especially for us. That is nice, Loki. Show off your wings. Hi, Arwa. Welcome to the live stream. So, how do you teach your owl to jump or step from its perch onto your glove and back? Well, in the beginning, of course, your owl doesn't know that you are expecting it to do this. Um, okay, Victor OMG, I will answer your question after my explanation, okay? I will get right back to you. So. In the beginning, your owl obviously doesn't know you're expecting it to jump on your glove. Every time you want to go, oh look it, every time you want to go for a walk, or every time you want to train with your owl. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that, well, no. The first thing you need to teach your owl, of course, is to eat on the glove and to stay put on the glove. And I have already made videos about that, so you can go and check them out. From the moment you have taught your owl to eat on the glove and stay put on the glove, um, you can start teaching it to step on your glove itself when you want to go on walks with it. The first step is to just push your owl onto the glove. And I'll show you how to do this. Just one second. Let's turn Luki's perch around so you guys can see. You are going to, let's pretend I have a glove right here, okay? You are going to uh, make sure you are in front of your owl, so your owl should be sitting towards you. You're going to, <laughs> to put your glove behind your owl and you're just going to push it back gently so it automatically steps onto your glove so i'll show you guys right now just imagine that my hand is a glove <laughs> like this and then you push it like this voila okay and when you want to put it back on the perch you do it like this you also give it a little push so Luki is not liking this but okay um so this is how you start doing it. If you do this every day, because if you own an owl, obviously you're not just going to make it sit on the perch all day, you are going to go on walks with it, you're going to fly it every day for its food. Um, if you do this every day, then after a while, your owl will make the connection. And then when you will hold your glove in front of the owl, so not uh, behind the owl, but in front of the owl, it will step onto your glove automatically. It will make the connection in its brain after a while. Um, and if you want to know the difference between stepping and jumping on the glove, well, if you want your owl to step on the glove, then you just hold the glove closer to your owl and it will, automatic it will automatically step onto the glove. If you want your owl to jump on the glove, just hold it a bit further and it will jump. It's that easy. Um, then how to teach your owl to uh, jump from your glove back onto its perch. It's the same thing. Whenever you get back from your walk or from training your owl, you will push your owl from your glove back onto its perch every time. After a while, your owl knows, oh, when we're done training or walking <laughs> or hiking, uh, it's routine that I get that that I get uh, put back onto my perch, and 
your owl will automatically, after a while, make the connection in its brain and it will start trying to fly from your glove to the perch, even when you're not even close enough. So after a while, it will just start stepping on the perch or flying onto the perch itself without you having to push it on there. Excuse me, I drank some sparkling water, so it's hot in here in Belgium. So yeah, that's how you teach your owl. It's super easy. It's just a matter of habit. Um, so hi, everyone. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Lara. Hi, Ravenclaw. Owls are cute. That's a cute uh, YouTube name. Hi, Owly. Um, hi, Arwa. Hi, hi Melita. Yeah, that's, that's uh, it. I hope more people come to join us later. So Victor OMG, you asked, can you teach an owl tricks? Yes, you can, but not as much tricks as you would be able to teach a cat or a dog. Um, you can teach your, uh, your owl to hold a flower in its beak, for example. I have personally never tried this, but I know it is possible. And you can also teach your owl to... Um, stay up in the air for a few seconds before it lands on your glove when you are flying your owl for its food. That's also a trick you can teach your owl. It is called praying. Praying is something that falcons typically do when they hunt. So they fly and then when they see their prey, they stay up in the air and they do like this with their, with their wings. So they keep in the same spot in the air they stay at the same spot in the air and then they will dive towards their prey. So uh, staying in the air at the same spot is called praying. Uh, so yeah, that's a trick you can teach your barn owl as well. Lara Robinson says, Hi, I, I love you and I love falconry, but I was attacked by a Harris hawk and I still do it, but starting from the bottom, which is about an hour for me, but I don't have one. Oh, you were attacked by a Harris hawk. That's awful. How did that happen? <laughs> Ravenclaw sends me hearts. Oh, thank you. Heart back. <laughs> I love you too. Owly says, Elka, I feel bad. It takes so much practice for me to own a barn owl. It's nearly impossible. I uh, I understand, Owly, but where do you live? If you live in the US, then it is very hard and then you it will take you a long time to be able to get one. Um, but, you know, try to look at things in a positive way. Um, if this is truly your dream, then it's not about um, the moment you get your first owl. Because when you're in falconry training, I'm just going to adjust the camera a bit. Well, you're, when you're in falconry training, you will be training with birds of prey before you get your own owl. So you will be working with owls and raptors already. So you will be already living your dream, even though you, you won't have your own owl yet. Um, you see, it's not the destination that counts, it's the journey. Um, trust me, owning an owl, once you are used to it, is not that exciting. It's fun, of course, especially if you love owls. It's the bond you share is amazing, it's magical. But owning a dog is just as magical as owning an owl. Um, so I hope you guys aren't all going to be unsubscribing now because I just said this. But um, owning a dog is just as magical as owning an owl. Um, most people, especially young people, especially teenagers, are super excited about getting their owl because it's new. It's, it's, it feels like it's super special because... Not a lot of people do it, but trust me, it is not that special. Um, so I, I, I can relate to how you feel, but I just want to cheer you up by saying that you can always reach your dreams. I know it, it seems impossible. You know, I have a quote hanging on my, um, on my board uh, up there, and it says, 
It always seems impossible until it's done. So don't be discouraged, go for your dreams. And the fact that it will take a long time is because you're gonna do it in a responsible way and that's a good thing. So just go for your dreams. I know I don't know how old you are, Auli. Uh, you can always uh, share that with me in uh, the comment section or like here in the chat. Um, but you'll be okay. You can achieve your dream no matter what it is. And you should be having fun while you are working towards your dream. That's the goal of life, you know? If you would just receive whatever you want, then there would be no fun in that at all. There would be no fun in that at all. If you, if I just, you know, snap my fingers and you would have a perfectly conditioned and perfectly raised owl right now on your lap, where would, I mean, would you think that's fun? Then that's no fun. Learning is fun. Uh, improving is fun. Going through a process is fun. So I hope that helps. Arwa asks, how are you doing? I, I'm doing pretty good, Arwa, thanks. It's it's really hot here in Belgium, so I feel a bit, um, well, I don't feel bad, but I feel it's a shame that I, I didn't do a lot today. I just went to the gym and that was it. Um, but, you know, everyone here in Belgium is being super lazy because it's so hot. And you know what? It, it, it's always hot in summer in Belgium, but the weather is changing. It's becoming more tropical here in Belgium. It, it didn't used to be like this um, a few years ago. I'm sorry for looking screeching, by the way. Um, it's, it's not just hot. It's, it's, it's very tropical. And we Belgians, we're not used to this. It's, the weather usually really sucks here in Belgium. We have a few warm days and then it's cold again. And now it's, it's uh, tropical, tropical weather. It's weird. Melita asks, hi, can my owl eat fish? No, it can't. You have a barn owl, right, Melita? It can't eat fish. Uh, barn owls do not eat fish, so please don't feed your barn owl fish because it won't digest it and it will get sick and possibly even die. There are owl species who do eat fish, though, but not barn owls. Yes, Victor, OMG, that's right. Most owls would eat things like mice and chicks. Oh, Melita asks, can I turn on the air conditioner to my owl? No, I wouldn't do that, Melita. That's not a smart idea because uh, owls are very sensitive to um, respiratory diseases. Like if we get a cold, it's it's not... It's not that bad. It's just a cold. But if an owl gets a cold, it it will die. Seriously. I mean, it can heal from a cold. But a cold, a cold for an owl is like a terrible flu for a 100-year-old lady. You know what I mean? It's, it's lethal. So no, please don't turn the air conditioner um, to your owl. Kelly asks, do owls sleep? Uh... They sleep, but they don't sleep very tight that that often. Um, they, it's more like they rest. They do close their eyes, but they stay alert a lot of the time, uh, which is just a natural behavior because, you know, in nature, they also have to stay alert. If suddenly there would uh, be a predator, um, they have to always be able to flee, you know, to fly away. Lara says the the hawk, the Harris hawk that attacked her jumped on her face. Why? Why did it jump on your face, Lara? How did that happen? Tell me how that how, how that happened. It jumped on your face or it flew in your face? That is awful. I hope you didn't uh, get too many scars. That's awful. Um, Steven Skotarzak asks, if you have an owl and get another one, is it easier to train the second one because it sees the habits and routines of the first one? 
no, it's not, Stephen. It doesn't uh, work that way. It's not like kids. <laughs> um, they don't teach each other behaviors, as far as I know. I mean, there may be some exceptions. Maybe if the owls would be sitting together at a safe distance, though, because if they're not imprinted on each other, then they will kill each other and eat each other. But let's say you put them in the same room, and one owl sees the other owl uh, picking at its jesses to get free, that might be an exception. I've never heard of this, but that could be. But it's not like you can let your first owl train the second owl, or and it won't it won't help either. So no. <laughs> Looky, what's wrong? You want to fly freely? Is that the, is that why you're doing this, or are you too hot? I don't think you're too hot right now. Come here. Come and sit in front of the camera. Victor OMG says, I might ask for my thir 13th birthday to visit a falconry center. That is really cool, Victor. That's a great idea. It's also a great idea to teach, a, uh, to learn about birds of prey um, in that way. That's really cool. Gary James asks, hi, vegan. Yesterday you were talking about muse, jesses, and replacing them. Do you... Have you tried braided jesses? They're much better and longer lasting. Well, no, Gary, I haven't tried braided jesses. To be honest, I don't find them longer lasting. Um, maybe it depends on what material they're from, but if it's made out of some kind of rope, I don't find them longer lasting. Oh, look, she lost a feather. But thank you anyway. Yes, Kelly, Luki is cute, isn't she? But she is standing with her back towards the camera again. She always does this, don't you? You guys should be able to see this. I'll try to turn her around, but I don't think she's going to like it. I'm tricking you, Luki. I'm making you face the camera. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. They really like when you do this, you know, when you rub the area between their eyes. Steven uh, Scott Tarzak asks, why do crows, 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 why do crows and some owls not like each other? Um, crows are very, very nasty <laughs> birds. They they play with owls. They like to play games. They like to challenge owls. And um, well, owls sometimes fear crows. Barn owls might fear crows, but the bigger owls are able to kill crows. Uh, well, a barn owl would o would also be able to kill a crow. It it really depends on the crow and what what the uh, character of the barn owl is. But, um, Luki, don't step on my keyboard, please. Because you'll enter the live stream again, like you did the last time. Um, crows are really mean to owls. And it happens a lot that uh, a crow will challenge an owl and the crow ends up being killed by the owl. I saw uh, a video about this on YouTube. Maybe I should try to download it and uh, make a video about it. But I didn't see the ending. I think the owl killed the crow. It seems like it. Oh, she stepped on my arm. That is so cute. She's on the perch again. She needed some love. Uh, if you want, I can download the video for you guys. But... Uh, the ending isn't that clear, though. So, yeah, crows are very 
challenging. They challenge owls all of the time. And uh, they aren't very nice. <laughs> Look, he does not want to be on camera. Hello. Be here. <laughs> she's looking at my boyfriend, and I think she's expecting food from him. But she still has food laying next to her perch. So she's being ridiculous. So anyway, Stephen, owls don't like other birds in general, but if they stay out of each other's way, there's no problem at all. Except for, you know, the bigger owls will hunt smaller birds in general, you know, because they do eat smaller birds in the wild. But for the rest, you know, if, if owls and birds just uh, keep their distance, everything is A-OK, -okay. but that's the problem with crows. They will try to challenge the owl because that's just their character. Crows are nasty, very nasty. Oh, Lara says, um, when she was attacked by the Harris hawk, um, it, it flew into her face and she thinks she shook her hand when it landed. And also it wasn't a social bird either. Yeah, if you don't keep your hand still, um, the owl might lose its balance and um, it will try to fly off. But also, Lara, um, hasn't anyone uh, taught you to always secure your bird when it has landed on the glove? Securing your bird means that when it lands on your glove, you take its chesses between the thumb and index finger of your glove and you hold them really short, really short, like here, so that your owl can't fly in your face. That's why securing your bird is so important. Um, I don't always do this with Luki, but I should. It's, it's, I trust Luki 100%, but um, especially if you're working with bigger birds, then, then you should definitely stick to this rule. Um, oh, she pooped. That's nasty. That's nasty. That's, that's nasty. Ew. Okay. Oh, it smells. It, oh, ew. That's really gross. Anywho. Um, I will clean it up, baby. It's no problem. I'll clean it up after the live stream. I'll just put some paper towels on it. Okay. Oof. Um, what was I saying? Yes, I was saying that you should always secure your bird when you are flying it. Um, but Lara, of course, I didn't get... Uh, if you... I'm guessing you aren't a falconer. You said you love falconry, but I'm guessing that you were just attending a, a demonstration or something. But if you were just a visitor to a demonstration and they let you fly an owl or any bird of prey, they should have helped you and the, the falconer should have, you know, taken your hand physically and, and he should have held the, the chesses and put them between your fingers. I mean, a good falconer will do that. Things like that shouldn't happen. And, you know, if a falconer isn't able to stay alert in that way, he shouldn't be letting people uh, fly his birds. Hi, Trish. Welcome to the live stream. Victor OMG says, do you think children under 15 should have a bird of prey? Um, no, I don't think they should. Uh, you know, my, my mentor always tells a joke. When people ask him, you know, I have a kid and, uh, you know, she's 10 years old or she's 12 years old and she wants an owl. What species, you know, what type of owl should I get her? And my mentor always answers a stuffed one, you know, a stuffed animal, stuffed owl, because owls are not for children. They're not toys. Now, there are some exceptions. My mentor's daughter is called Lisa, and she's a very talented young lady. And she has been doing falconry from when she was little. But of course, her, her dad um, 
her dad is, you know, is a falconer. That's way different. If you're the child of a falconer, then you automatically, from a very young age, you will learn to be very responsible with birds of prey. But can you imagine parents who know nothing about birds of prey buying an owl for their kid? That is not going to end well. So that is why I'm answering this question with no. I do not think children under 15 should have a bird of prey. Uh, does that mean that it's not possible? No, of course it's possible. Uh, but only if the child has very responsible pa parents who are willing to send it to a falconry school and who are willing to supervise the child and uh, follow its progress, you know? Like... like um, my mentor did with Lisa. Oh, Lucky, stop being so noisy. I hope this isn't bothering you guys too much. Arba says, I have an owl, but I can't train it well. What can I do? Oh, bye, Kelly. Sleep tight. Mwah. Um. So, Arba, what do you mean by I can't train it well? Um, you can always send me an email and I can make you a proposition uh, to coach you to train your owl better. So um, if you want, send me an email. I will type my email address here. And make sure that in the email you put all the information, you know, where did you get your owl? How old, how old is it? And what is its history? Has it been with, you know, the first few months of it of its life? Has it been with other people? And was it abused or not? Was it a bread owl? Was it, was it um, taken from the wild? I hope not, because that's illegal and it's awful to do that. I hope not so. But, you know, maybe it's a rescued owl or something. Tell me everything. And if you want, I'll, I'll coach you um, and I'll, I'll make a proposition for you, um, you know, to coach you. Uh, for an affordable price if you want you know I don't know what exactly it is you need if you give me some more details I may be able to help you and maybe if you don't need um, that much help as as I'm, I'm thinking you need um, by the way you asked this question then I could do it for free it depends on how much you need and thank you Lucky is super cute Lillian Margaret B says, I think maybe Lucky thinks you are talking to her, so she's talking back. No, I don't think so. It would be cute, though, but I just think she's a bit uh, bitchy. She's a bit, how do I say this in English? She's a bit... She's a bit pissed off. Enough. Yeah, she's a bit annoyed, but she will come to rest later. It's weird, I just recorded a, a normal video, a regular video with her, and she was sitting on my glove um, and really enjoying, she was really enjoying sitting on my glove. She didn't make any noise and she was super sweet. So I don't know why she's doing it now, but you know, owls will, owls will be owls. <laughs> Blue Apples Homestead, welcome to this live stream, by the way, asks, how long have you trained birds? Um, for about six years now, um, I started my falconry training six years ago and I've trained Lucky and I've also trained uh, a little owl that I rehabilitated. I rescued her from uh, falconers who weren't being very nice to her. So I rehabilitated her from scratch because she didn't trust humans at all. And in the end, she did trust them. We were able to train her to sit on the glove, to jump on the glove, to go on walks with her. She would stay put on the glove and, you know, we made a lot of progress. And I didn't train any other birds yet because uh, those are the only two birds that I have had until, until now. I have worked with um, eagle owls though. I have worked with a European eagle owl, a Bengal eagle owl, an African eagle owl, a rufous licked owl. Um, a rufous licked owl. A hawk. A falcon. Um, and what other birds? 
a black barn owl, but it's it's the same as white barn owl. It's just black. Um, I think that's it. I, I I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I think that is it. Yeah. Oh, Lara says, you know, when she was attacked by the Harry's Hawk, that the falconer was coming over to help her to secure the bird, but he was too late. Yeah, but that shouldn't have happened. Andre says, hey there, can you please tell me how often do you have to feed a small owl daily? Um, that de I can't tell you exactly how often. Um, it depends how old the owl is and what species it is. If you're talking about a barn owl, for example, when it's when it's uh, a few days old, up until it's a few weeks old, you should feed it up to 12 times a day, six to eight to even 12 times a day. And it, it gets less and less as it gets older and older. But um, it's not only about how often you feed it, it's also about how much you feed it. You should feel its belly before you feed it, and you'll feel that the belly isn't feeling very tight. And after a few pieces of meat, you should feel the belly again. And when the belly starts getting tight, you should stop immediately, because little owls, you know, baby owls, owlets, they will eat themselves to death. Um, they won't stop when they're full. So they can die if you don't uh, make them stop eating when they are full. So that's really important. And that's also why I don't recommend people buying an, an owl or a baby owl if they haven't enjoyed a falconry education because it's really important to know these kinds of things. And I can tell you now, but I mean, if someone told me when I was raising Lucky, I, I would be like, okay, I should feel her belly, but I don't know. I don't feel anything. Is this tight? Is this loose? I wouldn't know. So you still need something, someone next to you helping you raise your owl. Uh, but I hope um, I've helped you out a bit by answering this question. Hi, Alexander. Mick Lee says, the way I was taught was if a child cleans it out and can prepare cut up its food. Oh yeah, but that's not enough, in my opinion, for a child to be able to own an owl. It has to be able to handle the owl without getting hurt, you know. Uh, owls have lethal weapons called talons, you know. The child should be able to recognize the owl's behavior. It should recognize when the owl is pissed off and when the, you know, the child should know when it should leave um, the owl alone. Um, it should know a lot about falconry and, you know, children can be really impulsive. It depends on the child, but, you know, the law can't make a difference be between talented children, smart children, less smart children, uh, responsible children, is impulsive children, not so impulsive children, you know. That's why there is one law for all and it's a, it's a, it's hard, you know. Victor OMG asks, but how much would a lesson cost and would you have to pay every time you come? Well, I paid one big price for my whole falconry education. A, a falconry education costs at least $1,200, at least. And that's that's a friendly, a really friendly price. Um, here in Belgium, most falconers will ask in between $1,200 and $5,000, but most of the time it's included in the price that you have the rest of your life to ask them questions and to ask them for help if you're having trouble with your bird. So uh, it depends on the falconer and on the country you live in, because this is how it goes in Belgium, but it could, it could be way different in, in the US or in whatever country you're living in. Hi, Gavin Babusiak. You wanted to ask me a question. Oh, yeah, you, you already did. Where do you get food to feed your owls? Good question, Gavin. 
I get the food from a store which is called Horta. Horta, that's how it's written in Belgium. Um, it's it's an hour drive. No, it's not an hour drive. It's a, a forty minute drive approximately, and it's a it's a garden center where you can buy all kinds of things. You can buy cat litter there. You can buy stuff for your horse. You can buy plants. Um, and you can also buy one day old chicks there and mice and rats and fish food. You can, uh, so yeah, it's, it's a garden center. That's also a, a pet store. I don't know if you guys have these kinds of stores in the U S or in where, wherever you live. You, you can also order one day old chicks frozen online and they will deliver it uh, to your house. But of course, you have to be home because you have to be able to put them in the freezer right after they have arrived. Um, I've done this once when I was staying at my boyfriend's place at the seaside. Um, he ordered them from me online, but uh, I normally always go to the store, which is a 40 minute drive. Mancho asks, hi VH, hi, <laughs> was wondering will the owl get scared if you do loud things very close to it because I've heard that they can't see anything close to them. That is absolutely true, Mancho. Owls can't see very well from up close. So they will um, be a little bit more defensive if you approach them from up close. Sometimes Loki will try to bite me or she will be a bit bitchy if I come close to the perch and I only offer my hand and she she won't recognize my hand. Uh, she can't see it very clearly. And then when I put her on my hand, she'll be nice because she, know, she knows, she feels my energy and she knows, oh, it's her, it's VH cuddling me. That's cool. So um, to answer your question, yes, they do get scared if you do loud things very close to it. Like for example, vacuum, if you vacuum near your owl, but that's not only because of the sound. It's also because it's a it's a big vacuumer. It's 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 strange to your owl. But it, my owl is also scared of the small vacuumer. I have this small vacuumer that you use to vacuum breadcrumbs from your table. I don't know how you call that in English. I'll Google it. Just one second. I'll try to Google translate it. In Dutch, it's called a kruimeldief. Try to pronounce that, guys. Kremel thief. Oh, apparently it's a petty thief. A petty thief? Really? A petty thief. Let's see if I can find some pictures. A petty thief. No, that can't be right. I don't think Google translated that correctly. But I hope you guys understand what I mean. Fran Tucker, hi, welcome to this live stream. She says, I think she's acting up because she doesn't have your attention. So happy, finally caught a live stream. Yay. Yeah, yay. <laughs> Fran, I, I thought you had joined us before, but apparently not. Um, yeah, you could be right. She could be a bit pissed. I mean, she turned her back to me. It's like she's, um, how do you call that in English? sobbing sobbing like oh i don't have her attention i'm so sad this isn't fair you know like kids do sometimes oh i'm getting behind on your on your comments you guys um Tarlock says, I'm thinking of doing a falconer's course, but as an owl is not a falcon, I'm wondering if that's really relevant, though I would like other birds and more experience. Uh, Tarlock, that is not an issue. Seriously, it's good to learn how to work with other birds of prey. And um, 
you won't only learn about other birds of prey, you will also learn to make your own equipment in falconry training, you will learn how to put the equipment on other birds of prey, and it's always good to work with other birds as well, because this will help you handle your owl and it will help you understand your owl better so it's definitely a good thing if you have the opportunity to follow a falconer's course please please do it's so good to do to do it hi bonnie i'm doing fine today how are you doing Oh, Victor says he lives in England. Cool. Good to know. Mancho asks, VH, can you Google Bredo's Wicken? It's a, it's a little mountain right in front of my house. Okay, I will Google it. I will Google it. Oh, that's cool. And there's apparently a castle on the mountain. It's so pretty. Beautiful nature. That's cool. Thank you. Oh, Blue Apples Homestead, thank you. So apparently in the US, you would call it a handheld vac. Oh yeah, that's cool. Pouting, yes, friend, thank you. Look, he was pouting. <laughs> or sulking. Thanks, Jane. Oh, Jared Blocker says, Vegan hippie, I have owl pets myself. Want some pictures? I don't know how to send pics in this chat. I don't think you can send pictures in this chat, but you can always send them to my email address. If you want. Hi, Lara. Welcome back. Do what as the video thumbnail, Gavin? Mancho asks, can an owl get mad at you and don't play, cuddle or interact with you for a few hours or days? Yes, it can. Um, it can, but most of the time, if an owl gets mad at you, it's not because it's mad at you. It's because it's, it's just having a bad day or it's, it's just not in the mood for any cuddling. That happens. And if you respect that, then your owl will definitely want to cuddle again a few hours later or the next day. There is one exception, though. Owls are really sensitive to bullying. If you bully your owl or if you mistreat it in any way, they will remember forever and they will never forgive you. Now, I'm not saying that if you make a little mistake and this hurt your owl accidentally, they should be able to feel that it was an accident, normally speaking. But if you tease your owl, you know, it doesn't even have to be bullying. If you tease your owl, owls hate this. They are so sensitive to this. And uh, yeah, if you tease them or bully them in any way, they will remember your face forever and they will not like you anymore and it won't go away. So be aware of that. Um, Oh, I'm glad you're doing good, Bonnie. Victor OMG says, when I'm older, I want to live in Belgium. That's cool, but you should learn Dutch first then. Um, I can help you with that if you want. Oh, Gavin says, do a picture of Lucky pouting sulking. I don't know if I can do that uh, right now. Because if, if I want, I, I would have to download the live stream and then convert it and then um, find the exact moment where she was pouting. And then uh, that is uh, a lot of work. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi, that's more. So you changed your uh, new YouTube name. It's now Harvest Moon. That's cool. Oh, Mancho asks, will your owl have a favorite toy that they will cuddle with or will they just destroy it? They will just destroy it. When they're adult, they will see most objects as prey. So Lucky doesn't really have a toy. She might play with a, a paper laying around when she's flying freely in the living room. Um, she might do that, but she doesn't really have a toy. I tried... Um, I tried a moving mouse, you know, a wind-up mouse one time. She didn't really react to it. I have a video on it. It's called uh, Another Owl Experiment. Uh, Loki reacts to a wind-up mouse or something like that. You can find the video on my channel. She didn't uh, react much. Oh, yes, I am Dutch, um, Gerard Blokker. Well, Dutch, I am from Belgium. Ik ben van België. <laughs> oh, it's your Xbox name. That's cool. Gavin says, do you think if I imprint my bunny on my owl, if I get one, he or she will not attack him? It depends what you mean. I mean, you should imprint the bunny on the owl, but, but the owl, that's even more important, the owl on the bunny. Yeah, it could be uh, possible. If you imprint your owl on your bunny, then the owl won't attack the bunny later on. But of course, you, you should do it very carefully so that uh, the bunny nor the owl will get hurt in the process, you know? Oh, Lara Robinson says, Hi VH, I would like to tell you that I have found a much better place to learn falconry apart from you. Well, I'm glad for you then. So would you like to share with us what that uh, place is? Is it also a YouTube channel or is it um, um, a school or something where you live? Let us know. I don't mind. I never said that I was the best or anything. So if you want to go there, then feel free. And I hope, uh, I hope that you get what you want. Mancho said, I heard that you can see owl's eye through its ears. Have you heard about this? I heard that you can see Al's eye through its ears. No, I haven't heard about that. <laughs> Jenan Alduwezen says, please talk in English. I will, don't worry. It was just uh, a single sentence. Elke, have you any experience with American kestrels? They are so beautiful. What are owls like when around other birds of prey? American kestrels, just one. I have to Google it uh, to see how it's called in Belgium. And then I can tell you if I've worked with it. Oh, no. Uh, yes, 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 I have. I have worked with American kestrels. Um, they are super beautiful, by the way, and um, you ask, what are owls like when around other birds of prey? Well, that depends on how they were imprinted, because if owls aren't imprinted on other birds of prey, then they will uh, be hostile towards any other bird of prey. So... Um, my mentor's birds, for example, are human imprints. So they haven't been imprinted on other birds. They have only been imprinted on humans. And that means that when we do a demonstration 
the birds um, all sit next to each other, but at a safe distance. So they can't reach each other or otherwise the bigger birds would eat the smaller birds. Um, and it has happened on occasion. Um, there have, you know, there do happen, you know, there are a lot of accidents that happen in falconry like that. Victor OMG says, can you say how are you doing in Dutch? Okay. Who got it? That's it. Who got it? Oh, Jenin says, I have no idea what you were saying before. Um, someone asked me, Jenin, if I was Dutch and I answered that I was Dutch, but that I, but that I'm not from the Netherlands, that I'm actually from Belgium. So that was what I said. You didn't really miss anything important. Oh, Jared says that he has seen in one of my videos that I pet my owl and he, sh he says I should be careful because they have um, oil on their feathers. They have a layer of oil on their feathers. And um, if you pet them too often, then the oil will come off and it will cause, um, it will cause them to create holes in the feathers and then the feathers will break off. In theory, this is true. I mean, owls do have an oil an oily layer on their feathers, but I don't pet Loki that often. Um, I only pet her, you know, I don't even pet her every day. It's just, I do it for videos and I do it when I, I do cuddle with her sometimes, but I don't always strike her, I don't always caress her feathers. I will sometimes, you know, do this with my finger against her chest and it, it's not that damaging if um, it's not that damaging uh, if you just do it a few times a day. It would be different if you do it for minutes or hours on end. And also, your owl can always reapply new or new oil that it will take. Uh, it will put new oil on its beak. It will take it from a gland near the anus. Can I? Like there, there near the anus. <laughs> uh, your owl will take oil from that gland and it will reapply the oil on its feathers. So Gerard, thank you for your advice. But I already knew this and I know what I'm doing. So I'm not betting Luki too often. But I can imagine that you got the impression that I did because you've seen me doing it in a video but uh, i don't pet her that often and her feathers as you can see are in great condition lara robinson says it's a place where i live but it's a while away and that's not what meant apart from you as in you are great i just don't always have the time to watch your videos but i try my hardest oh lara i'm sorry if i misinterpreted your comments i thought you uh, I thought you were saying that you didn't like my channel anymore because you had found uh, a better place as in, yeah, well, yeah, as in they're better and I don't like you anymore. I don't know why I did that. I'm so sorry. It must be my low, low self-esteem. But I didn't take any offense to it. So uh, don't mind. Uh, don't be sorry or anything. Um I do not claim to be the best. I am not the best. Uh, I'm not even a true falconer because, you know, falconry is the art of hunting with raptors. I don't hunt with raptors. I know about owl care. I know about working with bigger owls. And um, I try to make people happy by making videos. But I'm definitely not the best. So I don't even mind if people would be telling me this Sometimes people react negatively to my channel and they say, oh, you think you know everything just because they have read sweet comments from some followers or subscribers. And the thing is, it's other people who say I'm the best. It's not me. <laughs> I don't think I'm the best. 
Harvest Moon says, uh, do owls have the ability to remember you after a very long time? Yes, they do. Loki doesn't visit her mentor, well, my mentor, um, that often, and she does remember him. Uh, it's so cute to watch. So yes, they do remember people after a very long time of not seeing them. But not if they just saw you once, you know. You have to have established some kind of bond and then they will recognize you after they haven't seen you for a while. But they, they don't necessarily recognize your face, you know. They, it's just the feeling they get with you, I think. Gavin asks, have any birds tried to attack Luki while you were on walks with her? No, but I am very alert when there are bigger raptors flying in the air, hunting. Um, when that happens, I will usually stop training with Luki because there is always the danger of the bigger raptor attacking Luki. And also you will notice that if you're training with training with your owl and there are bigger raptors uh, hunting in the area, you'll notice that your owl will notice as well and it will become very nervous. So it will be very hard for you to train with your owl that moment. So in that case, it's best to stop and find somewhere else to train or just try again the next day. Mancho asks, I was wondering if my name Milan exists in Belgium. Yes, it does. It does. There are people called Milan here in Belgium. Yeah, Gavin, thank you for backing me up. So Gavin says, yeah, you would have to be rubbing your hands all over her for hours to get all of it off. That's true. Thanks, Gavin. Thanks, Bonnie. Bonnie says, I think Luki loves when you pet her. She looks so happy. Yeah, that's true. She loves getting attention from me. She loves being cuddled. Um, if I don't cuddle her enough, she will get depressed because she's imprinted on me and she's used to getting a lot of attention. attention so, Hi, Craig. Welcome in this live stream. <laughs> Fran, thank you uh, for uh, Francis. It's <laughs> it's not your low self esteem, Elke. It sounded that way to me too. The statement from Laura. Glad that's not the way she meant it. You're a much nicer person than I am. <laughs> really, I thought. Oh look. Really, because I thought I I kind of overreacted. Um, already so I'm glad that there are people who would react even worse that way I know I haven't uh, an emotional issue you know <laughs> don't listen to those haters you are great Elke thank you Harvest Moon Craig Maysfield asks what is your feeding pattern for for Luki um, Craig I will give Luki Two chicks on Monday, then two chicks on Tuesday, two chicks on Wednesday, one chick on Thursday, one chick on Friday, then nothing on Saturday, and then one chick again on Sunday. That's usually the pattern that I follow. And of course, I don't just give it to her. I fly. She flies for the food. But that's just how many chicks she will get um, that evening of that day. I still need to make a video about feeding patterns for barn owls. Victor OMG asks, what should you do if an owl attacks you? That depends. Is it uh, a captive owl or a wild owl? Uh, you know, if you're working with a captive owl and it attacks you, it's probably wearing jesses, so you should, you know, Shield your face, grab its chesses, and try taking control of it. 
if a wild owl attacks you, it depends on how big the owl is. You know, it has happened that people are walking through the forest and great horned owls or barred owls have attacked them. It's, it's usually just one owl attacking. But uh, this can happen uh, when it's breeding season because then the owls get an, a hormonal spike and they can become very aggressive because of their hormones being all over the place, kind of like women PMSing, you know. And um, when that happens, it's best to shield your head with your arms and just go lay down on the ground and don't move until the owl releases its grip. Um, so protect your eyes, your head, your face, because they will attack with their talons towards your face. They will always go for the face. Ah. Blue Apples Homestead says, you are so sweet and beautiful. Thank you for taking time to share your knowledge and, and experiences. Oh, I love you too. That is so nice. <laughs> Gavin says, oh no, Lucky is an affection addict. And when you stop petting her, she gets withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> yep, she does. Oops. Something happened on my computer. Sorry. Lara says, I love you and I'm sorry if I'm not the best falconer, but animals help with my recent low self-esteem issues. Oh, you also have low self-esteem, Lara. Welcome to the club. Join the club. I have to. Animals can really help with uh, self-esteem. That's true. So I hope you're, you're getting better. Uh, Craig Maysfield says, do you leave Lucky's dresses on all the time and does she pull them? I leave them on all the time, yes, and um, she does pull them sometimes. Uh, I think right now she's just preening, but sometimes she will pull them. Uh, not because she's preening, but because she's wanting to fly around. And if she can't, then she will get a bit frustrated sometimes. Luckily, that doesn't happen too often because that I find really sad when that happens. Craig says, my buzz, buzz is the name of his owl, by the way, never has them on in the house. Yeah, that's, that's, that's okay. But for how long then do you leave it flying around the house? I'm curious. Oh, Victor says if he spelled the, the Dutch sentence he asked correctly. Yes, you did spell it right and it's amazing. It's uh, super correct in Dutch. So, yay! Applause! Uh, has Loki ever exhibited any nesting behaviors? Hi, Spencer Epperson. Welcome in this live stream. No, she hasn't. She hasn't ever exhibited any nesting behaviors. Nope. Oh, Lara says she has low self-esteem because of people in school. That's sad. But if you're bullied, please just know that um, it's temporary. And bullies often have even more problems than the people who are being bullied. Iman Klolo asked, did Luki ever bite you? Um, yes, she has beaten me, but not, it wasn't that bad. It's, um, owls can have, how do you say this? Owl, owls can have, I don't know how to say that in English. Owls can have... I don't know how to say that. I will Google Translate it. Google Translate. But it's a difficult... It's a difficult expression. It's not the it's not the quite exact term, but I would say owls have allure allures. Allures? Do you know what I mean? 
they can get a bit cocky. And, um, you know, on occasion, Luki gets a bit cocky. And if she's a bit pissed off, she will try to bite me. And uh, I will then gently take her beak between my thumb and index finger and show her that I'm not scared and that she can't do this, that it's not okay to do that. And then she'll she'll stop. Um, it's perfectly normal for an owl to, owl to display this behavior sometimes. Um, but you should always correct it immediately. But, I mean, she, she hasn't really attacked me or anything. Um, I have an amazing bond with her, but she has tried to bite me on a few occasions, definitely. Gavin says, oh, come on, someone disliked this live stream. Whoever in the world did this, shame on them. This is real con content, like 100% real. Seriously, definitely not fake. <laughs> Thank you, Gavin. You are the best. I don't know who disliked this, but I do know there is one person um, who follows my channel. I don't, and I think he is the one who always dislikes my videos. There's all, always one person who always dislikes my videos. And um, it's, a, it's, it's an old man, actually. I think it's him. I can't see, but I know that he, he has periods where he apparently has the time to comment on every single one of my videos. And he will always comment the same thing, uh, that he is convinced that owls should remain in the wild, that they should be free, that what I'm doing is animal abuse. You know, and that's completely his prerogative to feel that way. So I just let him. I usually remove his comments. Um, <laughs> I usually remove his comments. Um, I think that's the person who is disliking all of my videos. And then it's very probable, probable? Then it's very likely that it's also him who's disliking this live stream. I don't mind. People can dislike. You know, you have a like button and a dislike button and it's whatever, you know. Victor OMG asks, how old are you? Who out been you in Dutch? Um, I am 32 years old. <laughs> Oops, I said my age online. Gavin asks, do owls molt their primaries? Uh, I don't understand the word primaries. I'll Google translate it, but I don't know if I'm going to get a good result. I don't know what you mean by that, Gavin. So if you could explain, then I can maybe answer your question. Oh, Bonnie says you are very pretty. That's so nice. Thanks. Craig says, Buzz stays in the porch overnight and while I'm at work, then he will come in the house when I'm home. He sits on his stand as he has a few in the house. He is very good. TBH. What is TBH? I don't know what TBH is. Um, that's cool, Craig. Um, it's good that you have some stands, some different stands in the house. It will prevent your owl from jumping on furniture i think um i would do with i would do this with luki too but the thing is when our youngest daughter is in the house she will not pay any attention to you know leaving doors closed or open and luki might fly away but when she's not here i could do it but i'm afraid it will cause territorial issues in luki excuse me have you had any problems craig with territorial behavior then because this is why I don't let Luki do this. I let her fly freely around the house, uh, but not all day. Lara says, thank you very much. In every live stream, I will be there and update on my falconry progress and self-esteem. Thanks. Ah, uh, that's cool, Lara. You're always welcome to join us. And uh, yeah, I will see you again soon. Craig says he only puts the chesses on his owl uh, when he takes him out in the garden. That's cool, Greg. Craig, sorry, not Greg. Craig. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, Bonnie, that's right. People pick on people they are jealous of. That's true. <laughs> yeah, friend, there's always one hater. <laughs> Primary flight feathers. Primary flight feathers. Okay, Gavin asks if... Barn owls molt their primary flight feathers. Primary flight feathers. I should look that up. I do I don't know for sure uh, I understand I know the words uh, flight feathers of course but uh, my problem Gavin is that I don't know where the primary flight feathers are located I have you know as I don't know this term in English so what I will do is I will uh, write down your question I will look up all of the information and then I will make a video about it what do you think of that? Because I do not want to just give you an answer if it's if it's the wrong answer. I want to make sure that I only give out correct information. So I am writing down your question. Do burn owls mold their primary flight feathers? Question mark. It's noted. Oh, to be TBH is to be honest. Cool. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> uh, Tarlock says he had a question higher up and I missed it. I'm so sorry, Tarlock. Everything is moving so fast. I'm trying to go back. And look up your question. Uh, the last question I can see, Tarlock, is if I had any experience with American, American kestrels and what owls are like when around other birds of prey. But I did answer that one. So where is your other question? I'm sorry, Tarlik, I, I can't find your question. So if you would repeat it, that would be awesome. <laughs> Victor OMG said, Elke, if you could buy another owl, would you do it and give Loki, let's say, a friend? No, Victor, I wouldn't buy another owl if I could. And um, Loki wouldn't have a new friend um, because she's not imprinted on other birds. She is a human imprint. So human imprints um, don't get along with other birds. She wouldn't be able to become friends with the other bird ever, you know, even if I would introduce them or let them sit in the same room for years and years, it just wouldn't happen. They would it attack each other or be scared and hide away. Um, so... No, and I wouldn't buy another owl because one owl is enough for me. Um, I rescued a little owl a few years ago and I only did it because no one else was able to take care of it. My mentor wanted to take care of it, but he didn't have enough space left in his house. He uh, So he asked me to take the bird in because he knew I was able to rehabilitate her and uh, I did. So I did it out of um, compassion or out of responsibility. I didn't do it because I wanted a second owl. It was actually more a burden to me because two owls, you know, I worked a full-time job and two owls meant that I had to 
walk two walks. I can't walk two owls, you know, one on each glove. So it meant that I had a bit less time to spoil Luki. And, um, but you know, I did it anyways, and I don't regret doing it. But I, if I can, if I can choose, I wouldn't buy a second owl. I would buy a new owl if something would happen to Luki. But I'm holding on wood right now. I'm holding on to my desk that that will never happen. <laughs> I want Luki to become 100 years old. Yeah, Gavin, Luki is sassy. She will not be told where and she moved back to her perch. Yeah, she did. She has a mind of her own. Oh, Craig Maysfield says no territorial behavior at all. His bird is massively imprinted on him. Uh, awesome job, Craig. But I, I, I don't, you know, I, I have you on Facebook and I've sometimes I see your pictures passing my timeline and passing by <laughs> my timeline. And um, I have always had the impression that you are an amazing falconer. So, yeah, my respect to you. I think you are amazing. So, okay, bye, Lara. Thanks for staying a while. Oh, Craig says, the only thing with Buzz is that he will not sit with me without his jesses. He prefers his stands. Yeah, that's a consequence of an owl that is um, free most of the time. You know, it's it's a good thing. It's a good thing, but... Uh, Luki doesn't want to sit with me always. Luki doesn't always want to sit with me either, but she does stay with me more easily, I think. You know, Craig, just one tip, you might, you probably already know this, but it can help to let a uh, bus fly freely first for a couple of hours and then take him with you. And then he might stay with you longer without his jesses. Uh, I do this with Luki sometimes. I let her fly freely around the house for a couple of minutes. And then when I notice that she has calmed down and that she is just sitting somewhere, I will take her and she will stay with me because she's tired anyways. <laughs> oh, Craig says, you are so helpful, Elke. I really appreciate it. Thanks. I'm glad I can still help you because I had the impression that you don't need any more help. So it's kind of an honor. Spencer says, your videos are extremely fun to watch and very informative. Thanks. That's a great compliment. Uh, extremely fun. That's cool because, you know, in the beginning of this channel, I feel like I made more funny videos or I made more jo jokes during my videos. And now I feel like when I do regular videos, I'm more serious. But I'm glad you still find my videos fun. <laughs> Gavin says, Luki has a crook in her chest, like she's full of herself. Yeah, sometimes she is. Victor OMG asks what my Facebook is. Well, I would have to copy paste the link then. Uh, this is the link. There you go. Oh, cool. Spencer says he has a large nest box at his home in California with a pair of actively nesting barn owls. That's super exciting. Fran says, I have to go back to work, but we'll hope to see you again soon. Keep up the great work and thanks for your time and efforts. Very interesting and fun stream. Yay! Bye, Fran. Have a good working day. And uh, say hi from me to your colleagues. <laughs> Thank you. 
Louise D. Hi, welcome to this live stream. She says, hi, Alke and Luki. Just wanted to stop by and say, I just love your videos. Keep up the wonderful work. Luki really makes me smile. Cool. I'm glad that uh, Luki can do that. Mohamed Abokalil <laughs> says, I sent you a message on Instagram. Oh, but you didn't reply. I did. I, I don't... Um, I'm not that often on my Instagram. I'm the worst social media person ever. Let's see, Instagram. I'll check it right now, Mohammed. Uh, messages or something. Was it a private message or a comment or something? Can I only see messages on my phone, guys? Because if that's the case, then this, what I'm doing right here, has no use. I will check my phone uh, after I finish this, this live stream, Mohamed. And um, I'll try to reply if I received it. Um, but, you know, if you want to send me an important message, it's always best to send me an email then I will see your message more likely. So here's my email address. So if I'm not able to reply to you on Instagram, then just send me a message to this email address, if you will. And I'm sorry that I didn't reply. It was not my intention at all. Oh. Tarlock. He says, you keep missing my question. I posted it again. You don't see me, LOL. What? Tarlock, is there something wrong with this chat? The last thing I see of you is TBH is to be honest. That's the last comment of you that I can see. And then the comment before that was so... You just posted so uh, two times. <laughs> I swear to God that I am not seeing your question. I'm scrolling through the chats. I think there's something wrong, Torlok. Seriously, I think there's something wrong. Something is going wrong because I honestly can't find your question. But I am seeing your your last comment. You keep missing my question. I posted it again. You don't see me. You don't see me. LOL. Ah, thanks for adding me on Facebook, Victor. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to end this live stream because uh, it's getting a bit late and my boyfriend has fallen asleep. I should help him. We are, uh, he was sorting the journals that he has to go deliver um, tomorrow, but he, he has fallen asleep. So I think uh, I'm going to help him a bit. Um, Tarlock, uh, something is going wrong. I, at first, I thought it was me, but I seriously can't see your question in the chat. So is it possible that you did something wrong on your keyboard or something? Uh, so maybe join me in the next live stream and ask your question. Um, I see spots. Thanks for the live stream. Informative as always. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, I see spots. I would buy, Gavin says, I would buy a super chat because I love your videos, but I don't have credit card info. Joke alert. This is a joke. <laughs> That's okay, Gavin. Whatever. You don't have to buy a super chat. Uh, it's always appreciated, but it's not uh, necessary, you know. Louise D, good night, Elke and Lucky. Sleep well. Craig, thanks and bye. Good night, people and Elke. Good night, everyone. 
Oh, Rihanna fan 94. Love your channel. Thank you. Do you have a super chat? Yes, I have, Victor. Uh, I have a super chat. This is a, you know, you can buy a super chat by, you know, where you write your comments for the chat. Underneath that section is a dollar sign. And if you press that, then you can put in an amount and uh, donate something if you want, but it's not an obligation at all. So I will keep answering your questions for free. Um, Okay, guys, uh, I will go, well, I'm not going to go to sleep. I'm going to help my boyfriend out a bit, and then I will see you guys later, hopefully tomorrow. Oh, look, he's being so cute right now. Look. Anyways, bye, guys. Love you. Thanks for joining me here. Mwah. Yes, Lucky said bye as well. <laughs>